Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Uh, we are very eager to hear your story and your input on, on mentoring and all the things that relate to, to living well uh, in the midst of this very chaotic uh, season. But uh, do tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, where you are from, because you kind of look like you may be from Singapore yeah. or Malaysia. So tell us who you are. Yes. Yes. Good. Actually, for me, it's good morning. We are nine o'clock in Texas time. I'm in Texas, uh, Dallas. Dallas, Texas is uh, uh, north of, uh, we, are, we are, I'm north of Dallas in a city called Plano. And, uh, and I originally from Singapore, I came to America in 1988. So April, 9, April 28, 1988. So that's where I first arrived in this uh, big land. And uh, uh, so I am a Chick-fil-A operator. Chick-fil-A means uh, we sell chicken sandwich, the original sandwich. Uh, this is my uh, humbling 20 years. I just celebrate uh, 20 years as an operator uh, last June, actually. Last June, yes. So this I'm going for my 21st year. So uh, uh, yeah, very thankful that I am in this journey with Joanna and uh, One Rock and uh, um, and uh, be able to partner with uh, Tuart Cathy and the Cathy family in Plano, Texas, to to do uh, a little lo small location in in uh, in Texas. And we had a great pleasure to travel together with a group of others back in 2019 to Singapore, and you have introduced us to all sorts of different fantastic people. Singapore Bible College being one of them, Yakun Kaya being the other, but also Pastor Isaac. Uh, we actually have a group of people from Pastors Isaac Church here with us as well. How do you know each other? Well, as uh, some of you, the people from Isaac Church knows, Isaac from originally came to Texas for for his uh, graduate uh, uh, seminary journey with his wife Rebecca. So. Uh, I did not explain, I did not add that to, I also have four children. So I have a 20, 21, uh, he's gonna be uh, graduating uh, this coming May uh, and uh, a sophomore, a second year college student. Uh, and uh, he's gonna be, um, nine, he's 19 and I have a high school or you call it a secondary school, uh, uh, second year, uh, uh, a boy, so I have three boys, a 21, a 19, and a 15. And I have a girl. The last one is a girl, so she's a second grader. So Nehemiah, the first one, Nathan, and uh, Nahum, and Rachel. So how do I know Isaac? Because uh, Rebecca was one of uh, my one of my son's Sunday school teacher as well when he's while, while they are in uh, in in uh, in uh, in Texas. So. Um, we, I went back to Singapore a few years ago, so uh, intentionally bringing my son to visit the Sunday school teacher. Uh, in, in, uh, so we reconnected with Isaac uh, when, I, when I returned home to, to visit. So I think it's a, for, for me as a, as a dad, also as a, used to be a Sunday school student, it's very crucial when we talk about mentoring is seeing your student come back and visit you is a tremendous plus as a journey as a leader. So I think as, as we can reflect on this topic, how many students, how many people will in later in their life will come back and see us? It's the fruit of your journey as a leader or science school teacher. It's people come back wanting to come back and thank you for your time investing them. So, uh, and for us, we at times, we have to go visit my science school, our science school teachers. So if I go back again, on my one, my bucket list is visit my Sunday school teacher because I missed that the last trip. So, <laughs> wow, no, fantastic! And what a legacy, isn't it? This is what we live for. We live to live behind relationships and uh, invest into relationships. So it sounds as though you've got uh, millennial, millennial generation Z people living in your home, but wow. but the majority of people running your multi-million business as also millennials am i right or generation yes. z yes, that's correct so you've got how many employees do you have josh i have uh, right now 65 full and five part-time yeah mm -hmm. so tell me before we dive into some of the questions here 
what have you observed about the young people today about the challenges their fears their expectations um what are your observations i think right now at this moment of time, information is very easy. It's so, so accessible from Google and all that. My, my second son is a perfect example. Um, he has tons, or he read a lot. He has tons and tons of knowledge. Sadly, he don't have comeback experience. <laughs> so he has no experience. He, he think that certain thing by reading, you got a concept taking care of those situations, but you have no life experience because there's a lot of things will happen and uh, it's outside of your your reading. And that is where the, the, the combat, the boots meets the ground. So I think sometimes we need to give them patience uh, to, to let them elevate, I mean, evaluate and on that journey. It's not easy because they, they want, they are impatient. They want the answer quick. Uh, I think a lot of encouragement, a lot of reminder uh, is crucial for them. Uh, that I, I believe as, as we have timeless value and timeless principle that we need to share. Uh, and ultimately, they need to see that from us too. So we, we are the walking uh, example, or we can, as a Christian, I'm the walking Bible of my, of my, of my restaurants. So, so I think that is crucial. I and mean, ultimately, it's the relationships that we have. Um, yeah. Thank you. And I, I still remember back in 2019 when you share, shared with us on devotions that among all these opportunities that we have, we have to ask a question, what is actually the purpose uh, of all these and kind of looking for this ultimate purpose. But here, um, Josh, we're going, uh, we're talking about mentoring. And I just wanted to ask you, in your opinion, well, what, what is mentoring and what does it really require of us? What, what are the um, nitty gritties of mentoring. Okay, let, I think before that we 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 need to walk back a little thing, few few things first. I think mentoring you are pretty much, you're mentoring or leaders. What you do is you bring a group of people from one place to another. I think we all know that from from A to B. So um, so along that way you are leading a group of people. So one of the prerequisite for 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 that journey is he had to be self. We have to be self led. It's our, my personal development and personal journey of growth is not the responsibility of my teacher, my boss, or whoever. It's my responsibility. We need to take charge of this, my course of my responsibilities. So I think uh, the people that uh, attend this class, I think they, they, they attend the class because they know that this is their responsibility in their personal journey. It's nobody else. So that is the first requisite, prerequisite of of any leadership journey. So on that leadership journey, um, I think one, one thought is very crucial because we are going, again, we are going from one place to another. So to be, we have to constantly reflecting on our journey from that, that journey. I would say very in, interestingly, sometimes we, we occupy ourselves with activities. We have tons and tons of activities. So, Sadly, not all activity equal achievements. We can do a lot of things, but many times those things don't count. Um, so I had to ask, sometimes I had to ask myself a question. Uh, I used to be afraid of fall, failing at things that really mattered to me. But now at times I'm afraid of succeeding at things that doesn't matter. So I think that is truly the activity versus achievements. Um, so I, I think another thing to reflect, reflective is, is this world is a busy world. Right now, we are, I think we have a lot of time to be reflective because we are downtime, we are at home, we are in bunk. I think that is a perfect time. This time will never come back again. To, be, to reevaluate where we want to go and where is our destinations. Um, uh, because we are, we are breaking down from our daily routine. Busyness. Is, 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 is a killer for, 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 for distractions. We are busy, we get distracted. And then uh, I've seen in my personal journey, there are people get distracted, then realize that, they, that they, they got distracted is maybe 10 years or 20 years later. Realize either they are stuck or they are distracted and found out that they are in the wrong place at 
and they spend all this time in the wrong place. So with, with um, so breaking down on, so in, how do you be reflective on reuvet? So it's at times like right now, we break down from our daily routine. Uh, at times we need to have morning walk by ourselves, spend time alone. Um, and, um, um, and then I, I, at least during this time, I asked myself uh, last March, in April, of course, or during all the fear and all that, I asked myself, is there some opportunity that is right now is available to us that is no, will no longer be here as soon as this market, the whole world open? So, so we explored that. So uh, we did a few things. And one thing that I did, um, uh, again, I sell chicken. So during the first month, I, we brought Chick-fil-A food to all our competitors. I bring it to McDonald's, I bring it to Burger King, I brought it to Wendy's to show them that we care because everybody is scared, uh, is afraid. But what if something we can do, a little bit extra to show that we care about them. So I think, are, I think at times we also gave away, uh, yeah, some family was stuck in uh, quarantine. So we, we give them food, they can, we bring them because they cannot come out. So they need some delivery services, but we brought it to them. So I think there are some opportunity that we can offer during this time. Um, only we can offer because we have that. I mean, I have chicken, so we can share free chicken to, to those people. So I, I would like to dive in a little bit when we talk about reflective. There are three things that we can do. Uh, it's a good exercise. Is keep, stop, and start. What we need to keep doing. Is there something that we need to keep doing? Uh, when I thought about keep doing, there's a thought of uh, what is worth repeating? What is worth repeating? I think at times uh, you can find the answer from the people that you, that you spend time, invest your life with. You ask yourself, hey, what is something that I do? When you look back of our journey together, what is something worth repeating? And you will always remember. For me, I also re I reflect why I thought about Sunday school teacher, I thought about my life. Who are the people that when I close my eyes, I can see their face in my mind? You know, those are the people that invest in me. So, so and then I walk back, what if so-and-so in your life, in their life, where they, when, they, when, when they are in their 30s or 40s, when they close your, their eyes, will they see your face? Will they see my face? That is the question that I have to ask. So how do we create that? So what can we do to keep doing that so that we will, uh, we will become somebody, we, our name will appear in their hearts. Uh, so uh, what is worth repeating? And another thing is what's worth imitating? Is it something that I do every day that's worth imitating? Um, I, I think we said, we say set a good example. What is something, what is something that we do is worth imitating? Um, we are Christians and we need to be the great imitator of Christ, how he loved us and cared for us. So we ha also, also have to see who are we imitating because we are also looking at what's ahead of us. We should imitate some people that is ahead of us. Um, and uh, so stop. So what we need to keep doing, what you stop doing. Um, if we don't take time to discard the unnecessary, we will not have room for what matters. So what we need to stop doing, I think this is a process of eliminations. Um, sometimes we want to become somebody we want to be known for. The process is easier at times to go through that stop the, the, the process eliminations. Hey, I am not a complainer. I don't complain. Uh, me and my wife, we decide many, many, when we first begin our journey, we don't talk about a D word. We don't talk about that D word because that is, that is, we will not talk about it. That will not, you know, we will not mention that D word. So what, what we need to stop and uh, stop to do this. What is your stop to do list? What's our stop to do list? Is there something we need to stop doing every day? So keep doing, stop doing and start doing. What need to start this year? Um, sometimes uh, there are people say, start doing the things that make your palm sweat. Start doing the things that make your heart beat fast. Um, start doing those things. What we fear doing most is usually what we most need to do. That's something that I, I, I 
try to remind myself. Um, and in my in my journey, I want to share with you. I start doing a uh, few things that I think at times when we are difficult, where we face difficult, difficult challenging, we feel discouragement. I, I I use my I use my phone quite often because I think I text myself uh, every day. So I, I there are people that I know that email themselves. So as a reminder, I text myself as a, any thought that come to myself, to me, I text myself because sometimes the, some interesting thought come to you, a, a, a wisdom, a wisdom, what you hear, you hear it, but you, you forget it real quick. So if you text yourself, you can go back and see what you learn. So I, I start doing this text myself. The second thing that I do right now, in order for us to, uh, to overcome challenge or overcome discouragement, overcoming failure is giving thanks giving thanks. When you start counting our blessing, our mindset somehow change. So what I do every morning, uh, I feel there's a, I'm not, a, frankly, I'm not a very disciplined person, but I feel that there is some, I need to have some order in my life. So, so, so one of the first thing that I do, I, when I wake up, the first thing I do is I, I will read the verse of the day. So that's, I want the first of the day, the word of God to come to my, my mind first thing in the morning beside for all the be social media. Second thing that I'll do, and I will text myself, there's some three things I give thanks for. Three things sometimes from last night. So so as a start to to start for the day with a heart of gratitude to God. So um, I think that will be uh, that is what I'm 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 doing right now. And I think lastly, uh, as a Christians, we we always do this. Somebody will come to us and say, hey, can you pray for us? Can you pray for us? Why not pray at that very moment? As soon as they tell you, can you pray for us? Okay. So there will be times I people will see me praying in my parking lot. And I, I sometimes, I think we have to be sensitive in, in God's prompting that, that there's some window opportunity at that very moment of time, that tenderness that you have experienced, that is the time you need to respond. And I, I think, I, I think that, that's a very powerful moment that for me as a leader, uh, employee walk by and see what he's standing over there stopping all the traffic and doing something then he realized i'm praying for customers i think or, or an employee or whatever so so um so that is something that I, and then if you keep if you keep doing that and uh and then you will you will write that of course in your gift thanks and then you start calculating those things so i also did last this beginning recently is keeping my prayer journal because we all of us pray so as an old christian like me we pray so often, but when was the last time I started listing down what the thing that God had answered in my life? So I did that. I did a prayer journal last year. So I did a list beginning a few weeks ago of what I got answer my, my prayer. It's amazing. I'm serious. It's really encouraging. So that is a, we have to, uh, we want, as a leader, we need to have a survival kit too, because we are constantly bombarded by discouragement, failure, disappointment. One of the survival tool that you have, we have is having a God answer prayer list that you go back and look at those what have God answer your prayer. And that way where you a reminder because God have helped us and uh, have done so many things for us, but we got so forgetful. So if you go, we go back to that list, you will feel encouraged. So I think we hopefully that's the first thing that we as a leader to kind of self-evaluate, self-realign uh, 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 ourselves in the, our journey while we lead people. Because if we, we have to give people a reason to follow us. We have to give people a reason to follow us. So, so we have to be compelling. What we offer have to be compelling. So that, that journey, this journey for me, is, I always ask myself, why do you want to work for me? You know, I have to give people a reason to work for me. So I, I constantly reevaluate and reflect myself. Is there something I do? What can I do better? So what are the questions I ask? How can I do better? What is worth repeating so that, hey, you will continue to work here and in, you tell people about how good is working here. So, so, so that this is, is a... It's <laughs> fantastic. This is really, really great. And you know, on personal level, I have to say now, I also try to pray immediately not to postpone because you know we say we often say this so 
recklessly oh i will pray for you and then we forget why not pray right now so yes and you have said so many good things here uh josh we have spent some time discussing the importance of mentors developing themselves you know it's almost like this illustration that if you're sitting on a plane and the oxygen level goes down you have to apply the oxygen to yourself before you can help other people so thank you for reminding us and i love these very very clear uh, steps of what do you want to keep doing, stop doing and start doing. And I want to encourage everybody who's listening to this video to apply it to their conversations with the young people. Take it to these conversations as the young person at the front of you. What is it that you can do to build your own survival kit? Right. That, like you said, uh, it's almost like we cannot um, we cannot, we need to take responsibility of, for our own thing. And the most empowering thing to do is to say to this young person, hey, start putting together your own survival kit. I can model the way uh, and give you some ideas. And Josh, I thank you so much. I, I think one of the most powerful things that you have said to me actually was, uh, you know, uh, I, I probably not quoting you kind of word by word here, but we don't want to wake up thinking, we have been successful in the wrong things. Um, what a powerful thing to say and ask young people uh, that we are mentoring, what is your definition of success and is it a right definition and are you actually following the right thing? Josh, the last question to you, it's very open-ended question. Uh, I know you've got so much more wisdom to share with us, but what other things would you say uh, or what other advice would you give from, from your very long and faithful journey of leadership and discipleship? Yeah, I think that's into, uh, we, we talk about, we talk about mentor, mentoring. Mentoring is such a big topic. It's a huge topic. So I, I don't want to see myself as a mentor. So I want to share a concept with you. I, I, I don't know if any of you heard that is a travel agent and a tour guide travel agent and tour guide travel agent um, plan the trip they will tell you where to go they even book a trip for you tour guide they don't just tell you they go with you they are there with you so so i i want to be i want to see myself a tour guide because travel there are tons of travel agent the teacher the counselor their friends you know sometimes travel agent is an easy job you just tell them, you just set an agenda, da, da, da. Okay, you can do this, you can do that. But tour guide is the one that that is yeah, that along that journey with you. So I, I will give out a few things. So tra travel agent uh, uh, bring advice, tour guide bring actions. Travel agent offer knowledge, tour guide offer wisdom. Travel agent uh, above the work, they are somehow disconnected. Tour guide, it's in the work they are engaged. A travel agent uh, tell you how to paddle the boat. Tour, tour, tour guide, they are in the boat with you. A travel agent uh, emotionally uh, is uh, an invested, sometimes really in that emotionally invested, but the tour guide, yeah, they love the journey. They are in the journey. So I want to see myself as a tour guide. I think there are tons of travel agents um, and uh, they would tell us, uh, at times, I'm a travel agent right now, I just give out information. <laughs> so hopefully I will see some of the, the friends in, in, in Singapore, in Malaysia. I would love to get vaccine and go there again and uh, become tour, tour guide. I, I love to tour, be tour guide. And uh, I, I think that will be the, the um, um, because that be, uh, tour guide is only a handful of people. Not many people. You can see on our personal life, who is our really tour guide in our life? Who can we call uh, in the middle of the night when we face something? Who else our list? Uh, I think walk back to uh, there's another concept of 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 um, of Navy SEAL and peace uh, peacekeeper. Navy SEALs they are on a mission. They are to win the war. Peacemaker they are just damage control. They want to be safe and safe and alive. Uh, they maintain order. We had to be Navy SEAL. We had to be there to help our team to win the war. And 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 uh, uh, and at times with that thoughts, uh, I will expand that. We say this: we want to be number one. However, 
Number one, the record is be there to be broken. Remember that. We said record is to be broken. Be the only one. Be the only one that visits somebody when they are most difficult time. Be the only one that show up um, in a special meeting. Be the only one. I think that is this is crucial. I think at, at times um, we 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 um, we we have to be available. So I, if, if my personal journey, I want to give a final thought is is to be a raving fan for somebody's life, raving fan. Because we all in in the in the social media world, we like to people to like us. They want we want to for people to follow us. Facebook follow us, like us, Twitter, you know, how many likes. Why not we go like somebody? Instead of one people to like us, we like somebody that we, we are engaging them. So we become their raving fans. So can we say this, that, you know, when I, when, when, you, when I spend my time with you, I will forever be your raving fan. Somebody's raving fan. So raving fan, I say that in raving fan. So remember, remember the, the time. I'll say for remember. Remember their birthday. Send a card to them. We send texts and all that. It's so easy. Why not send a handwritten card to them? Remember them. Be available to them. R is remember. A is available. This is the power of presence. People want to be presence. Um, um, third is uh, value. When we add value to others, we become valuable. When we make people important, we become important. So this is interesting, the whole give better than take, right? So when we give, we become the receiver actually. So R is remember, A is be available, V is for value, D, uh, okay, hang on, let me see, R, A, V, I, I is uh, influence. Influence. So we have to influence them and ultimately inspire them. So, um, I will say this too. Um, we we in my world, I was, we have a slogan last year is delivering wow. How can we deliver wow in somebody's life? People say when we look at your action, they say, wow. So how can we do that? R is remember A available, B B B B B uh, add values, inspire, and is nurture. I think relationship have to have to be have to be have be have to be nurtured. Um, we the correct good habits have to be nurtured. We nurture. We point them out to the their characters, their timeless principles. We nurture that. We we advise that. We cultivate that. Need to be nurtured. And and G is give. We give out. We give our best to them. Uh, giving something that will never ask for return. Um, um, this is what I, I say this all the time. This is very interesting. Somebody said it, but golf said this. Grace, grace never seems fair until you need one. <laughs> grace never seems fair until you need a little. So sometimes we had to give grace um, at times when things may not, they may not respond to, to our, our advice or our time. Uh, um, uh, God doesn't raise us to... Uh, Bless us to raise our standard of living. God bless us to raise our standard of giving. Um, and, and this year, so last year is delivering wow. This year, my kind of thought too is be the secret sauce. We need to be the secret sauce of somebody's life. <laughs> so, I love it. I love it. Be a secret sauce. Be the secret wow. sauce. And the clever thing about that, that, that actually there is no secret right that love was revealed through jesus christ and it's not that secret in many ways but yes be the secrets i love this be the secret sauce and go and like somebody josh thank you so much uh, very powerful and indeed uh, again reminds us all that uh, jesus uh, not only showed us the way but he jumped into the boat with us uh, he made the journey and uh, our role is to do the same. And again, one more time, grace never feels fair until we need it. Um, Joanna, I have one last thought. So this Please. is a thought that I, 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 I ask myself to, um, uh, I think it's, it's a life lesson. Um, I mean, yes. Um, what is one thing we can do? What is one thing we can do? That by doing it, 
everything else will be easier and unnecessary. What is one thing we can do? I think there are certain things that in our, in our personal journey, we talk about keep, stop, start. We talk about a lot of things. Be the secret sauce. Is there one thing in our personal life that we can do? Everything, by doing it every single day, everything else, a lot of things, it becomes un, non, unnecessary and uh, uh, easier. So something to think about. Wow, I love it. And I guess the secret sauce, again, I'm, yes. I'm going to think about, about this illustration, but I love, you know, when we say that somebody has got a secret sauce, it means that it's unique to them as well, isn't it? It's something that is uniquely put together and uh, they hold the recipe for it. And I think it's just a beautiful, very humorous way of looking at it because we all can contribute in a secret sauce way. We can contribute in a special way that we God are all yes, we are all secrets. We are the secret source of God creation. We are all uniquely created by God. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Love it. So brilliant. That's thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you for your time and your wisdom. Lots of things I have written down here. And Josh, hope we will hear from you again soon. And yes, I am also uh, hoping that uh, the curtain will lift of this uh, pandemic and we will be able to travel again. So thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.